Yeah, I just followed up actually on the location. I just emailed him like a couple days ago, um, someone from the city to see if they found a location that they kind of settled on or what the status was with that. Um, I think like the next move I'm trying to make is like create a working group that is people that actually live in the community so that they're able to like, because I'm not here right all the time and I'm like busy so I feel like. Right, yeah, I just wanted to like kind of like get it started and like help with like, you know, some of the details that I can, but it's like such a process and like, <laughs> it's like, you gotta be so patient because like city stuff and just, yeah, this kind of stuff takes whatever, five years, you know? Sure. So yeah, I think that's a little hard to explain to kids too as well, they don't really get it. It's like, once you get that money, you know, yeah, once you, right, it's not like, oh, we just put a, we just pour a skate park now. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, little. We, we wish it worked like that. Yeah, it would be nice, honestly. Oh. It would be done. You should admit it. Okay. Um, in case anybody else has to watch this, would you mind just first saying what your first last name was? Yes, Nicole Haas, N I C O L E H A U S E. Um, I guess, why don't you kind of start by walking me through you know, what it means to you to be a part of this documentary? Yeah, I mean, it was an awesome opportunity, especially at the time. This has like, been going on for almost five years now. so. Um, I was just 20 years old when this all started being filmed and um, I thought it was like a really cool opportunity to kind of share my story and uh, yeah just like show the world I guess how women skateboarding got to be where it is today and kind of like tell my piece in that because skateboarding is such a new sport and also the women's side of it is even newer so it's kind of like something that's never been told before something that people don't understand so it's like a really special opportunity to like have this big of a voice on a platform and stuff. Do you think it'll be inspiring to future skateboarders you know, to see you and say, hey, I can do that too? I think so. I mean, I hope so. That's kind of the goal of this documentary and um, just kind of inspire younger generations or, you know, even not younger generations, inspire everybody to kind of say like, you know, whatever your passion is, there's always kind of a pathway through to to what feels good to you, you know. You'll see in the documentary that there's a lot of different pathways to how women find success in skateboarding and they don't all look the same. So it's kind of interesting to, you know, kind of like fills out this, checks all these boxes of different ways of, you know, making skateboarding your own and kind of making it work for you, so. Is it fun to be able to come back here to Minnesota and have the show in here? Yeah, it is really cool and like, it's, skateboarding's so new here, right? It's even like newer, like California, skateboarding was started there and invented, so it's, it's been around since the 70s there. But here, it's still kind of like fresh, it feels, and um, there's a kind of a lot of new minds to it, so it's always cool to come back here and kind of be like, this is what's happening in, in California and a lot around the world that people in Minnesota might have no idea that's happening, you know? Or, um, I feel like just even going to high school here and like growing up with kids and they always knew I skated but they never really knew what I was doing really, you know, they don't, they didn't really have the whole perspective of what it was so this is kind of really interesting to, you know, show people this is what I've, this is what I've been up to and this is like what, what happens um, in the skate world. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty it was pretty mellow. Like she flew out to California maybe a few times a year and we filmed for like two days at a time. Um, or she had someone come to a contest or um, we filmed a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff that isn't in the documentary. But it, it was a pretty mellow process and working with Jessica was super easy and like she really under she really wanted to understand skateboarding too and like trusted us and like our our ideas and like you know, like there's different angles you have to shoot for skate tricks. Like there's a certain way you have to film skateboarding to make for it to come across correctly. And um, she really like was really awesome during the process of like filming this all and kind of like listening to us. Um, so it wasn't like she followed me every day or anything crazy or like wasn't, you know, she wasn't trying to make it into like some reality show. There was like no drama. It was really just like, you know, like tell us your story, um, what happened here events, contests, and like for me it was like a whole up and down process, right, you know, where I'm like, I'm gonna go to the Olympics, I'm doing this whole thing, and then it's like me questioning should I do that, and it kind of just shows like the 
ebbs and flows of like your career and like how things can shift and change and you know you can end up somewhere else you didn't really expect to end up and uh, yeah it's it was really cool working with her and just kind of like I, I don't know I had fun and then we all like then like my roommate Nora but also like my best friend skateboarder uh, for Adidas she we got to like you know hang out for a whole day and just kind of like goof around and the, like cameras would follow us and it was just kind of like a fun experience in that way yeah, for sure. Yeah, she was like so comfortable. Like also Jenny, her uh, filmer was also like so cool. We actually like I like enjoy hanging out with them, you know, like outside the cameras and outside this production. So it was like so easy to um, film with them and feel like you have trust in them and you can say things. And um, yeah, it was really it was a really cool experience. So so thankful for it. Um, I think it was kind of like through a process of things. So it was her daughter who was first interested in skateboarding. And she went, you know, she's a documentary filmmaker. She went to find a documentary that, you know, kind of showed her daughter, like, you know, women skateboarding. There was not really a documentary like that out there. So she decided to kind of take it upon herself. And um, she stumbled across Mimi Noop somehow. I think it might have been like Instagram. Mimi Noop was the head coach of Team USA. And I've known her for years, pro skateboarder as well. Um, and so we all like really trust Mimi and Mimi knows all of us. And so when she was looking for, you know, women to follow their stories and stuff, she asked Mimi and Mimi gave us, uh, gave her our, our contact and kind of, you know, she looked at her Instagram and was like, oh, these two are like best friends. And it's like really comical and fun. And, um, you know, they're, they're pro skateboarders and I want to like know how they got there and how they did that, so. When yeah. You watched it, what was going through your head? Ah, God, it's so weird to see yourself, especially like it's like four years ago, Nicole, right? And like I was in like a totally different spot in my life, I feel like too. So it's it's really cool actually. I feel like I mostly enjoy watching other people's parts in it. Um, I know a lot of my friends are in it, but for instance, Teen, she's from Cambodia and her story is I feel like the most special and the most in a way true to skateboarding in the sense that it's like she's so passionate about it and it's it's hard to do in her country it's hard for women to do a lot of things in her country let alone skateboard so like hearing her story was inspiring to me and I thought that was really special it was like you know looking back at myself I'm more like oh I don't know what was I oh, just like what was I doing <laughs> but like all the other stories in it are were like new to me in a way and inspiring so I think that was really cool um, but yeah, 20 year old Nicole was a little bit different than <laughs> nearly 25 year old Nicole. <laughs> but I'm sure it's fun to see how far you've come too. Yeah, it is fun. It is really fun to see like my perspective and how it changed and like who I am today and like really reflect on that is like super interesting to see on a uh, big screen. <laughs> what do you hope people in Minnesota get out of it? I hope people really feel inspired by it in whatever way, like not just in skateboarding, but in a way like whatever their passion is. I hope that they take from it that like, especially women can do whatever they desire, you know, like, and it doesn't have to be like black and white. It doesn't have to be like this way or that way. Cause you, you can really see in the documentary, everybody's journey and story is different, like in life and all situations. Um, you know, just like to really follow your heart and um, kind of just do whatever makes you happy. And there, on the other side, there will be an abundance of everything you could ever ask for. Um, the last thing I would ask you is, you know, tell me about why you like skateboarding, and especially why it's fun to be a part of that female community of skateboarders. Yes. Oh, so many reasons as I love skateboarding. But I think for me at first, it was like this like subculture, right, where there was like no rules and no boundaries and like. There's no like practices and coaches and um, I just found it like really freeing and independent which I've always like considered myself to be pretty independent um, and yeah you get to like almost in an art form express yourself it's like a dance or an interpretation um, by doing tricks and certain styles so I feel like I, I really love that part of it and I also love like how fast you can go how high you can go um, just the feeling you get when you finally land a trick after four hours of battling it or even a multiple days of going back to the same spot or 
you know, whatever it takes, I feel like there's a lot of reward in it and it teaches you a lot of perseverance. So I've, I've always loved that. Um, and yeah, just, I love flying in the air. It was like, feels so good. <laughs> so yeah, there's like multiple things, but it's definitely like a subculture in itself and it has all these different spaces for, you know, people, women, non-binary. It's like so diverse um, in the grand scheme of things you know, anyone can skateboard. You can come from any background or any demographic and um, it welcomes you. It's like so open and inclusive. And uh, you know, that's why there's such a big women's scene now is because it's, a, it's we, we made it, you know, like women themselves made this, this space for them in skateboarding because we showed how much we loved it. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it's so cool to really see how far it's come because even like, you know, five years ago, uh, it was still like a smaller scene. And even before that, I've been like competing now for almost 10 years, like I've kind of been in the industry for 10 years. And I really saw it when there was like, oh, one contest a year and, you know, there's like 20 girls there or whatever. And like that, that was like all the girls you knew in that skated, like in the world, it felt like, you know, like there wasn't many at all. So just to see how much it's blown up is like so special to be a part of and like, watch like how it happened especially after the olympics was announced it was like more accepting for women to skateboard in a way like families and, and uh, parents accept it more as like a, a sport or whatever um but yeah it's really cool to just see how much it's grown and how much opportunity has arrived for women you know to kind of like stay and like um mark their space like in the sport it's like so special and you know at the end of the day like we kind of had to fight you know you know, especially the women before me had to fight for their for their rights in skateboarding and for their e equality and everything that has come along with it. But um, now we're in like a spot where it's just like we're only going up from here, and it, it's just like really special to like see both sides of it, right? Like, because I came in when it was like whatever women skateboarding, like cool, we'll have one event a year, and you guys will get paid like way less than the dudes, and you'll be happy and that's not how it is now at all. So it's just like really cool to see that transition, like really um, just come all the way full circle. So. Well, I'm sure even in the time it took her to make the documentary, you know, it's changed a lot since then. Really, yeah. Like as soon as she started making the documentary, there like as right when it started changing, like almost like at the same time. So we all really had that in us still, like you know that um, feeling of it's still there still wasn't enough for us to like enough for women to like come into the sport, right? There wasn't enough opportunities, enough money um, for women to come and like to stay and like progress into their career. And um, yeah, like kind of like right when she started filming this, it was like the same time it was like parallel, like everything was going up because also a lot of women spoke out about the indifferences, you know, um, kind of like Megan Rapino did with women's soccer and men's soccer. Um, there's also women in skateboarding who you know, said those things and made the differences, you know. So it was really cool. What's next for you in your career? Whew. <laughs> just to keep on kind of doing what I'm doing. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to keep on filming video parts and progressing. Like, I feel like my skating is just kind of coming into its own in a way. And I feel like the next like five years, I'm really going to like develop like my own my own like style and tricks and I just can't wait to like keep filming and keep putting out like video parts and content um that's kind of like my main goal but yeah I don't know I just want to keep on like hopefully inspiring people and keep skating and keep loving it um I feel like that's like the best way is like through loving it you you show people the love you can have for something and that can inspire them in whatever way it doesn't even have to be in skateboarding you know um but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just want to keep on, keep on skating, traveling, meeting people, and like just doing fun things because life's short and you got to have fun. <laughs> Do what you love. Anything else for us? Anything else I haven't asked you that you think people should know? I don't think so. I think, I think we did good. Yeah, right. yes. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, me or you? Yeah, or both, both, both of us. Yes, I have the Minnesota Vikings colors. I'm so proud of them. It's not always easy to be a Vikings fan, but um, we made it happen today. And I you're, you're a Vikings fan, you're California. 
You know, a little bit. There's a lot of people from Minnesota and California. I say like all the smart ones are in California, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, there's. there's that is, is really, it's really cold here. Um, yeah, there's actually a lot of Minnesota people in California, I've noticed. So some some Vikings fans, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's easy on foot. Have people there? Yeah, yeah, it feels like home, like, instantly. 